about you guys. The passengers are out there. I've got to get to work. Will you, will you just let me go? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, and welcome aboard Titanic Airlines, <laughs> flight 1313. I would like to apologize for the delay in taking off today, but there was a family of black cats crossing our runway. Our captain today is Lucky Lusitania, and our in-flight movie for your pleasure is The Poseidon Adventure. So do just sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight. Oh, by the way, I'm Nancy, and I'm glad you flew me. <laughs> oh, are you the nurse, Miss Lifgate? I have some information for you. The ambulance will be ready in Los Angeles to rush your patient, Mr. Tobridge, to the hospital for his transplant. By the way, what is he getting? Uh, a nose transplant. <laughs> a nose transplant? Well, I never heard of that. Oh, it's very common in my business. What business are you in? I'm a meat grinder inspector. <laughs> oh, well, you'll be fine, I'm yes, sure. Yes, I know I will. You, you know, this is my second one. Your second one? What happened to the first one? And they got it on upside down. <laughs> How awful. <laughs> the first time I took a shower, I almost drowned. <laughs> We'll take very good care of you. Oh, uh, one thing is very important. What? I don't put any pepper on my food. You got it. <laughs> oh, hello, sisters. Coffee, tea, or milk? Oh, we'll just have some tea for two, a two for tea. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Aren't you? Yes. I'm Sister Mary Smothers, and this is my sister, Sister Sarah Smothers. Of course, <laughs> the singing Smothers sister. <laughs> Yeah, Mother Superior always liked her best. Oh. <laughs> We're on our way to L.A., San Francisco, and San Diego. All concerts to help the needy. My, but you're awfully busy. Oh, yes. <laughs> we really move our tail for you. <laughs> oh, you show people. <laughs> oh, by the way, mm -hmm. isn't that Nora Desmond, the silent screen star, sitting back there? Why, yes, sister, I think it is. Max. Yes, madam. Get your dictation pad out. It's time for me to give you my memoirs. Again, madam? Of course! Mm -hmm. I want the whole world to know about the great Nora... Nora... Nora Desmond. See how quickly they forget Max. <laughs> oh, and Max, that reminds me. Be sure and make a note to send a copy of this book to all my closest friends. Right. Send two cartons of books to Forest Lawn. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me, stewardess. Yes? You know, this is the first time I've ever flown on a... This is the first time I've ever flown on a 943. Oh. Are you sure it's safe? Oh, absolutely, Mr. Tobridge. Why, there's nothing at all to be worried about. Why, we have a completely computerized automatic pilot, all the latest navigational devices, and at least 100 safety devices alone. I mean, this plane is so safe, even a stewardess could fly it. <laughs> what was that? What was what? Well, just now, I heard an ominous chord of music when I said even a stewardess could fly this plane. There it is again! <laughs> Sisters? Wait, was it us? We don't do background music. <laughs> I'm getting scared. Oh, no, no. There, there's nothing to be scared about. I mean, the only way we could have a problem would be if there were a man in a small private plane flying in this vicinity. And if he got a touch of the Belgian Congo flu, which, of course, causes swelling of the joints and a loss of altitude. And then if he crashed into our pilot's cockpit and caused a hole big enough for the three men to be sucked out. <laughs> Anybody get near me? 
This briefcase is filled with dynamite. <laughs> I'm a desperate man. I tried. Oh, how I tried. <laughs> I tried to find work. But you don't know how hard it is for a guy to find work who used to be in charge of Friday night on ABC? <laughs> don't talk to me about a disaster. I know my bombs. What are you going to do? I'm going to blow... I'm, I'm going to... <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to blow a hole in the side of this plane. No, wait. But we've already got one. Then I'm going to blow up the whole plane and everybody in it. No, no, listen to me. Listen to me. You want airport. That was flight 99 out of Chicago. We did that four years ago. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> sisters, sisters, please, why don't you sing something to calm the passengers down, all right? Uh, everybody, we're going to have a little entertainment now. Just calm down. The sisters are going to sing for us. <sighs> and now the end is near. <laughs> Do you have an up tune? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna live till I die. <laughs> You're just something nice and bright and cheery to get the passengers' minds off the impending doom, all right? Good idea. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. If one of those bottles should happen to fall, 98 bottles of beer. <laughs> Come in, please. Flight 1313, do you hear me? 1313, come in. Come in. I'm trying to run an airline. Do you have to make these personal calls when you've got traffic stacked up all over this place? I'll only be a second. Nancy and I had a little spat before I took off. She might be a little upset up there. Now, don't worry. The guys in the cockpit can handle Nancy. That's what the spat was about. <laughs> Flight 1313, would you come in, please? Flight 1313. Hello, hello, Control Tower? Control Tower, this is Nancy. This is Flight 1313. Oh, can you hear me? Nancy, this is Murdoch. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, it's you. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Nancy, I want to talk to you. Well, I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to the pilot. Keep your pants on. What? Not you, sweetheart. Yes, you do. Listen, Murdoch. No, no, you listen to me for a change. No, but this is important. Murdoch, suppose I told you that our plane has a hole in it. Suppose I told you that the friendly crews, the flight crews, call you old friendly skies. And suppose I told you that nobody is flying this plane. Suppose I told you I heard you were giving out blankets and pillows in the parking lot. And suppose I told you that this plane is going to crash! <laughs> and suppose I told you that just once, just once, I'd like to hear you say, I love you, instead of welcome aboard? Oh, man! Bottles of beer on the wall, tin bottles of beer. What's wrong now? Oh, I just had a spat with my boyfriend. Oh, is that all? Is that all? We've been going together since 68. Bottles of beer on the wall. Oh, shut up. Bottles of beer on the wall. Pour two bottles of beer. If one of those bottles should happen to fall, no, 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 no. There are not 42 bottles of beer on the wall. Maybe an hour ago. 42 bottles of beer on the wall. You know what's on the wall now? I mean, hole is on the wall. But do you care? No, you sit there pretending to be Helen Randy. 42 bottles of beer on the wall. 42 bottles. I've had it up to here with your singing, lady. I've had a nose full of your singing. This is a Please, 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 don't control yourself. I can't stand that anymore. 42 bottles of beer on the wall. 42 bottles of beer. I can't Oh! Oh! My nose! See this gun? It's loaded and I mean business. I'm taking over this plane and I want to take it to Cuba. Don't you understand? This plane is going to crash in Salt Lake City. Okay. Max, what's happening now? We have to land in Salt Lake City, madam. Good. I wonder if Brigham Young still remembers me. 
Got it. That was the Air Force. The flight crew of 1313 just fell on the front lawn of a motel in Albuquerque. <laughs> was Nancy with them? No, no, no. She's still up there in the plane. Good. Let them get their own girl. <laughs> Hurry, Doc. Now, listen to me. She's up there alone. And love her, spat or not, you are the only one who can save her. Control tower to flight 1313. Nancy, listen to me. I'm going to tell you how to fly that plane. Thank you. First of all, I want you to say you're sorry. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm sorry. Now. Now say, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> Please forgive me. Please forgive me! Pretty please with cream and sugar on it. Oh, get the plane down! Please get the plane down. Please get the plane down. That's better. Now, Nancy, here's what you have to do. What? There's, there's a little white knob on the instrument panel that controls the automatic pilot, and it will get you down safely. Just pull it. Where is it? Oh, to your left, there are three red lights and a green arrow with a sign over it that says... This is your white knob. <laughs> Got it? Uh-oh. What's wrong? I think that white knob is what the pilot was holding on to when he left. <laughs> so what happened? Pilot. There's no way. There's no way. She can never get down now. Without that little white knob, she has no control over the vertical stabilizers, the ailerons, the dive brakes, or the in-flight movie projector. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that that plane will go down in a screaming power dive and disintegrate in a great ball of fire against the side of a mountain. What's wrong? Oh, nothing, love. Just do your thing, Nancy. We'll get back to you. <laughs> and then when I was two, I had my ears pierced. <laughs> You're not writing any of this down. We'll never finish my book if you keep this up. Don't you understand, madam? They think their plane is going to crash. Stand in! Stand in! <laughs> what are we going to do? I'm going up after her. Are you crazy? Don't argue. I've got no choice. No, no, I can't allow it. Look, I'm the only man in the whole... <laughs> only man alive, the only man in this whole world who can fly that plane. No matter how much damage there is to that plane, I can bring her down. But you... That's the way I'm built. <laughs> Don't try to stop me. There's nothing you can say that will stop me. But how are you going to get up there? Now, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> I've got it. It's an old bit, but it just may work. Where's the door? Oh, over here. <laughs> I know a lot of you are wondering what's going on, so why don't we just turn up the lights and see if y'all have any questions. <laughs> yes. Uh, how tall are you? How tall am I? Well, I'm, I'm five feet seven. I'm five three in heels. <laughs> yes, sister. Who's your favorite pilot? Oh, my favorite pilot. Gosh, you're putting me on a toughie. Let's see. Uh, there's so many that I really like, but I guess I, guess I have to say my all-time favorite is Jimmy Stewart. I love him. I really do. Yes. Uh-huh. Are you ever going to have Rock Hudson on the plane? Oh, uh, we have tried. We've really tried to book Rock Hudson on this flight, but he's so busy, what with Macmillan and wife and everything, but uh, maybe we'll get him on this flight during his hiatus. Thank you for asking. Yes. Why do you tug on your ear? Oh, I tug on my ear? Well, I tug on my ear because, uh, well, it's just my way of saying, I'm so glad we had this time. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Any other? Yes. What's your first job as a stewardess? Oh, my first job as a stewardess, let's see, I got my start back on the old Gary, uh, Indiana flight. <laughs> yes, sir. How old are you? I'm oh, sorry, but that's all the time we have for questions now. But uh, thank you very much, and uh, stay with us, because we got a great landing coming up. So don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Honey, 
get this plane down. Now, what seems to be the trouble? <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Well, want to help Daddy land the plane? I do want to. <laughs> Okay, hang on. I'm going to set her down now. Well, now, you said I could help you. Oh, uh, yes, I did. You see where that white knob used to be? Uh-huh. Stick your finger in the hole. Oh, all right. <laughs> Good. Oh. We're going to land this little baby now. This is fun. One bump or two bumps? One bump, darling. <laughs> disaster a real pleasure. <laughs> well, just to tell you, it's 2.48 local time here in Salt Lake City. The temperature is 72. The humidity is 64%. It's partly cloudy with a 20% chance of rain and a 60% chance of... Earthquake! <laughs>